just yesterday. Oh, there you go. Sorry, talking to you. Good grief. Even? Right, no, look at this. Um, look, I, I've got to do a, a little thing through the live streamers to start with. Um, we have had no internet all week up until yesterday and um, we're not too sure it sounds like the internet's still quite dodgy here at the moment so if you're watching live and it fades out or glitches out we're going to actually upload the whole service later this afternoon to make it so that it's there on the internet um, so if you're someone that watches right now um, if it glitches we do apologize it's because we've got no internet or limited um, although Andrew seems to be doing something over there which is magical. No? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay um, well, there you go. So the answer is we might have a live stream, although we might just upload it in a couple of hours' time. Um, yeah, so there you go. For, to start the service, we'd like to acknowledge the dark and young people, the traditional custodians of this land that we're living in. Um, we'd like to acknowledge their elders and leaders, past, present and emerging. It's fabulous that you could be here for worship. I've got a little video clip that I'd like to play just to start the service. I love that image of what if we were more like Jesus. Let's pray. Great God, we praise you for Jesus Christ who showed us life, life in all of its fullness. Not a self-consumed life that is all about me, but a life of service and love and grace. We praise you that we are the recipients of Christ's love and grace. We praise you that Christ served us by dying on the cross. Christ died so that we could have life in all of its fullness. So that we can serve others. But also so we can be richly blessed. God, we do praise you for all that Christ has done for us. And for all that Christ is doing in, in our lives. For the ways you touch us. For the ways you care for us. In the big ways and in the little. For the times we realise your presence. For the times we don't even see that you are there. God, we praise you that you are at work in us and for us today and every day. And we give you thanks, and we give you praise. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, glory to God, to the God of the heavens, the God who made everything.
our lives and take this day and take the worship and let it be yours. Amen. Please grab a seat. Any birthdays or celebrations happening around the place? None? Uh, hang on, Rodney, before I go up there. A birthday? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were still gloating about Queensland winning. That was all? That was... I was just, just doing a quick assessment. Queensland, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it your birthday, Carmen? Woo! Maturity. Any other celebrations going? Doing a quick assessment. Let's pray. Wonderful God. For birthdays, we give you thanks and praise. For soul supporters of Queensland, we pray as well. God, we give you thanks and praise that you are with us for each and every step along life's journey. That you never leave us. That in the big moments and in the small, you are there. And you walk alongside us as our loving God. Amen. A couple of notices. One, there's Pizza Sunday on today. So if you're here for worship and you'd like to hang around for a pizza at the end of the service, we'd love you to join us. There'll just be a couple, couple of pizzas and a bit of a chat. It would be fabulous. Um, any other things that I need to mention? Oh, Barry's got one thing that he wants to sort of talk about, our recycling station. And go for it, Barry. Yes, probably by now you're all aware of the new recycling station that looks neater and uh, has got a number of options available there. In the last couple of weeks, I've come across two new options for recycling. A lot of those hard to to um, to deal with items that uh, you know pr uh, currently have had to just go into the red bin. Um, there's Recycle Smart. Um, it's available online. The details are in the the notice sheet, so uh, look it up there. But I just wanted to bring to people's attention because it brings, um, gives you options for um, uh, your, your pill packets. They'll recycle those. Dead biros, um, they, they do them. Um, old clothes that can't be worn. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that um, they will make use of in a constructive way. Um, and the, the other one is called um, Brad Banish and Recycling Program. Both of these are available on, online. You, you need to, to chase it online to become in, enrolled. But it, uh, all those um, bathroom things, um, toothpaste tubes, toothbrushes um, can, can go into there, plastic razors, um, coffee pods, party supplies, plastic plates and straws. Um, at last, there's somewhere you can put plastic straws. And um, yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of things uh, on both of them. Look it up and please make use of it. Thank you, Barry. So yeah, look, if you go up just outside um, Christie's in my office and Claire's office up there, there's a recycling station where you can put your dead batteries and a few things like that and Barry will clear them out from time to time. So up there. One last thing, we, do, we remember last week I mentioned that we're doing a thing called Growing Young and we're looking at how we can care for our youth and children's ministry and how we can nurture that a little bit more and there's a survey, it's not just for young people, it's for everyone, we would love you to do the survey, it's on our notice sheet and so you just go to the notice sheet and there's a link there that you can follow. Which also reminds me, our notice sheet is an email. It's not sort of a piece of paper at the door. It's an email that we send out. If you are someone that wants to receive our notice sheet and you're currently not receiving it, send us your email address. And if you're someone that um, does not have email or does not like email in any way, shape or form, and um, we do do a collection of paper versions that we sort of hand out to those that particularly need them. So if you're someone that's not getting the information in the life of our church and wants it, please let us know. Just send us an email with your email address and we can send you on the notice sheet each week 
just has all the info. Phone the office. Phone the office. Yep, you can phone the office or just send it to our admin email and we can start informing you as much as we can. So do the online, start, on, online survey if you can with Growing Young. We would really appreciate it. It's only open for a month. Let's continue in worship with a song. I really appreciated the what if at the beginning because um, we've been busy packing up my parents' home. Uh, <laughs> down in Cooma, they're moving up here, downsizing. And I just think I was so engrossed in what we were doing there that sometimes I was forgetting how huge God is. Um, and so I just found it um, helpful to think what if I could just get rid of all those distractions and remember who God is for a moment. Um, I took a few little times out to go and walk in the bush and that was really helpful. Um, but yeah, let's stand and sing and see if we can just take a moment to really remember how holy the God is that we serve, that we worship. Let's stand and let's sing together. Holy, holy, holy.
bow before thee. King of glory, holy are you, Lord. before us and you'll be here on and we just praise you for your holiness amen amen hey kids do you want to come down here i've got a book for you if you want to or you can stay where you are you can choose but i do have a book it's called max and i think you might like it you can look at the pictures up there on the screen if you want to. You coming up? <sighs> Morning arrived on a street like any other street, in a town like any other town, in a house, the colour of the sun and the shape of a lightning bolt, and a baby woke in his cot. <sighs> Not just any baby. He was a super baby, son of superheroes, Captain Lightning and Madam Thunderbolt. Imagine him behind those yellow walls, his fingers curling and his feet kicking. His name was Max. His parents, legendary catchers of thieves and bullies, loved Max dearly. Do your parents love you dearly as well? You can walk already, said Max's dad. And you can talk already. And I think 
that soon, it's that you'll be soon flying like a bird. He'll be a superhero just like us, said his grandma. But first, he'll need to fly, said Grandad. Although they bounced him and bumped him and threw him like a feather on the wind, Max did not fly. He just floated gently back to earth. Max grew as super babies do, but still he didn't fly. Just hovered a little. Just hover a little, said Madam Thunderbolt. Every superhero needs to hover and hurtle and swoop. Well, maybe sometime soon, she added. He's not hovering yet. At home, Max and Phantom the dog played on the floor. Come on up and join me with the budgies, said his dad. I can't, said Max. I want to play with Phantom. He walked and he talked so early, said Captain Lightning. I can't understand why he doesn't fly. When I was his age, he said, said his granddad, I got in trouble for leaving finger marks on the lampstand. By the time he went to school, Max was not a flying superhero, but just an ordinary boy with a cape and a mask. Which were no help to him at all in the schoolyard. People were coming up to find out what kind of super his skills he had. Poke, grrr, slam. Why don't you just do tough things like your mum and dad? Whack, bam, pow. And why don't you, why do you dress in those funny clothes, said Aaron? Why don't you fly, asked Daisy. Max just shrugged. Yeah. The sun rose one morning with the world famous superheroes deep in dreams of yesterday's exploits. Grandma and Grandpa dreamed of heroic past deeds. Phantom, Phantom the dog dreamed of rabbits. Who could know that a baby bird was about to fall from its nest? Max knew, and he saw it from his open window. The bird was not ready to fly. He ran to the stairs and he took them three at a time. He was running very fast. He reached the front door and he pulled it open. What do you reckon he's going to do? <gasps> there he is, it's happening. The baby bird fell and Max flew to save it. Plop. He caught it. Max flew the baby bird back to its nest. You be careful up there, Max, called Captain Lightning. His dad had come up and seen him. Madam Thunderbolt swelled with pride. In the weeks that followed, Max could be seen hovering like a summer dragonfly above the school gates. And try as she might, Miss Honeyset couldn't keep him firmly in his seat in class. And at lunchtime in the schoolyard, his friends, to his friends, he was still plain ordinary Max. Well, not quite ordinary. But then, as Aaron said, everyone's different in some way, aren't they? Now that Max can fly, will he become a superhero like his legendary parents? Will he hurtle and swoop and catch thieves and crooks and bullies? Not important, said Madam Thunderbolt. Let's call him a small hero. A small hero doing quiet deeds. The world needs more of those. 
And Max, well, Max wished his mum wouldn't hug him in public. Now, on a Sunday afternoon, their week's work finished, Captain Lightning and Madam Thunderbolt and Max would ride high in the warm air over the town. Can we go up into the jet stream, jet stream asked Max. Whenever you're ready, Max, answered the legendary superheroes, Captain Lightning and Madam Thunderbolt. There he is, hovering behind a plane. You know, the world needs small superheroes that can just do little things. Not always do we have to do the big things and the amazing things, but sometimes we can just do little things. Because, you know, God is the God of big things and of little things. And God wants us to do big things and little things with our life as God does big things and little things with us. God's not just there at the big moments, but in the small moments too. And that is incredibly important. I think we've got a song and there are some instruments there if you wish to join in to the percussion section. Yes, please join us in singing Amazing Love. And if you know the actions, please do the actions because it's really hard to do them with just the one hand. So I'm not going to even attempt it. Um, but if you know them in the congregation or if you feel really brave and want to stand up with the kids and do it, um, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Stand and sing Amazing Love. Amazing Love. Get enough of your amazing love, amazing love, amazing love. It blows me away, your amazing love. Your love is higher than the mountains, amazing love. Deeper than the sea, amazing love. Wider than the universe, amazing love. And it's reaching out to me. Fantastic. Please grab a seat. And kids, Craig and Emma are there and I think they're going to be doing something exciting, even discussing how God can be God in the small things. <laughs> For the rest of us, let us come to God with our prayers of confession. Let's pray. God, you are at work in this world in big ways and in little, and we are amazed that you are there for us. But God, forgive us when we miss seeing you at work, when we explain your work away by luck or accident or chance, when we fail to see your power touching our lives, when we ignore you, 
rather than turning towards you. We want to be people of strong faith, God. But we can fail to live up to our own goals, let alone the calling that you have in our lives. Take us, God. Shape us into your people. For like Ruth from the Old Testament, we want to be your people. We want you as our God and we want to be your people. Help us to see you at work and forgive us when we miss it. Help us to embrace your work and forgive us when we turn from it. And together let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing Desert Song in all of those times, big and small.
Our Bible reading today is Ruth chapter 4. The book of Ruth chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. No sooner had Boaz gone up to the gate and sat down there than the next of kin, of whom Boaz had spoken, came passing by. So Boaz said, Come over, friend, sit down here. And he went over and sat down. Then Boaz took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. So they sat down. He then said to the next of kin, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land that belonged to our kinsman Elimelech. So I thought I would tell you of it and say, Buy it in the presence of those sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not, tell me, so that I may know. For there is no one prior to you to redeem it, and I come after you. So he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, The day you acquire the field from the hand of Naomi, you are also acquiring Ruth the Moabite, the widow of the dead man, to maintain the dead man's name on his inheritance. At this, the next of kin said, I cannot redeem it for myself without damaging my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging. To confirm a transaction, the one took off a sandal and gave it to the other. This was the manner of attesting in Israel. So when the next of kin said to Boaz, acquire it for yourself, he took off his sandal. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, today you are witnesses that I have acquired from the hand of Naomi all that belonged to Elimelech and all that belonged to Chilion and Marlon. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabite, the wife of Marlon, to be my wife, to maintain the dead man's name on his inheritance, in order that the name of the dead may not be cut off from his kindred and from the gate of his native place. Today you are witnesses. Then all the people who were at the gate along with the elders, said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you produce children in Ephrathah and bestow a name in Bethlehem. And through the children that the Lord will give you by this young woman, may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighbourhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the descendants of Perez. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron of Ram, Ram of Aminadab, Aminadab of Nashon, Nashon of Salmon, 
Salmon of Boaz, Boaz of Obed, Obed of Jesse, and Jesse of David. This is the word of the Lord. Guys, can I say, it is such a hard passage to try and weave through. If you want to sort of do a normal kind of sermon where you pick the passage apart bit by bit and tell people what those little bits mean along the way. But with the book of Ruth, you actually, well, there are probably scholars out there that can do it. I can't pick the book of Ruth up and then sort of pull it apart in little bits because the story is the big story. The the story in Ruth is from the beginning to end. It's only four chapters. Read the four chapters and see the big story in the book of Ruth. Don't try and pull it apart bit by bit. Because if you do, you're going to get caught into all sorts of problems of trying to understand the culture of the day. And we won't get there that well. You've got to remember that it is a very male-dominated and misogynist culture that we're looking at here. And so sometimes when you look at some of the words there, uh, they're a bit of a struggle. Like things like, but some of those struggles are actually still quite profound at the same time. For the women of the town to actually say that Ruth is like seven sons for Naomi is an incredibly honouring statement. We might look at it and go, well, you know... (laughs) But, yeah, it's an incredibly honouring statement. It's a statement that is saying, this woman has done so much. This is our final week at looking at the book of Ruth. We've gone through four weeks of looking at those four chapters and have read each chapter in its entirety. And the thing that we've been playing with is human love reflecting love divine. And one of the things that has come through in this book is that as we've gone through, we have seen in Ruth and in Naomi and in Boaz their behaviours and their actions reflecting God's behaviour. This hesed, actually I should get someone to pronounce it correctly, but this hesed that is there, this statement of It is that faithfulness, loyalty, dedication and love of God. It's a word that is used in this book a bit. And really it's actually mostly a description of God that we've said. So God's said displayed perfectly in Jesus. Who came and lived for us, healed and cared for people, displayed an active faithfulness and love in his life to the point that he dies for us on the cross. That's the perfect description of what we've gone about here. But that word is also here to describe Ruth and her actions. And Boaz today, in the reading that we've gone through, Boaz is showing it here in his dedication. He has seen Ruth as a woman of integrity, a woman of faithfulness, a woman of greatness. And so here he is actually displaying Hesed to her. He is actively showing intentional love and faithfulness to her. As we've gone through the book, we've seen the actions of these characters and how they have reflected God's love, God's actions. But one of the things that I want to look at today that I find fascinating in the book of Ruth is that Ruth, you know, there's this commentator that is telling the story. And the commentator never mentions God. The commentator in the story as the person is telling through the story is not actually saying, well, you know, and God did this. He's not saying that at all. In fact, God is rarely mentioned in the story. There is a couple of really important times, like when Ruth says, your God will be my God and your people will be my people. Ruth claims a faith in God. In chapter 1. But the commentator does not constantly refer to what God is doing. But that does not mean that this book is not a story of faith. Because this is a story of profound faith. 
It's an absolutely a story of faith. If you watch the characters and see how they behave, we see so clearly that they are behaving in a faithful, loving way like God. And the story is a part of great King David's heritage. It's a part of that, that, that lineage at the end there. Demonstrates where this person fits into King David's family tree. And is it, is it Matthew that has the big long list at the start of it? Ruth is mentioned in the list of people that are there in the line that brings us to Jesus. She is mentioned there. This woman is a part of the genealogy of Christ. And that's really important because it shows that these characters, Ruth shows her loyalty and her faithfulness. She is the one that is mentioned there. This story is a story that is pivotal in our faith. But God is not unseen but unmentioned in the process. And really is a player in the book of Ruth. God is a player in this story, bringing this story and nurturing this story through. God is like a thread that is woven through the characters' lives. God is like a thread that is woven through this story each and every step of the way. Acting in the story. Working for the good of the characters within the story. God is the bringer of hope for Naomi as a new child is born. Bringing her from her sadness to her joy. And God is a provider leading Ruth to glean in Boaz's fields. One of the things that is there through this story is that it's like Coincidence after coincidence after coincidence. They go back to the breadbasket because Bethlehem is named the breadbasket. That's actually what Bethlehem means, breadbasket. And they leave there in, the de in that drought, in that famine and go away to find food. But then they come back to the breadbasket and there they glean in Boaz's field. Out of all the other fields that she could have gone to, she comes to Boaz's field for food and sustenance. The one who sees her as an incredible woman of faith and faithfulness. As the one that actually wants to marry her and draw her into his family and honour the dead as well. And in this story, do you notice that Boaz makes sure that he does everything right? And when he goes to the front of the city gate, coincidentally, the person that is the Kingsman's Redeemer, the closest family relative to Ruth, is there. And they have the conversation straight away. And Boaz is able to marry her and to have the family. This story has God working through it in the miraculous and the mundane. This story has God working through it in some of the big moments, but in also some of the little ones. And I love it that the story does not tell us where God is at work. Because if it starts to say, and God did this, then that's all we see. You know, when we look at something and we sort of hear, uh, and God did this, and then God did this, we forget that God is constantly at work and that God doesn't just step in and do the big and the miraculous, but the each and every step along the way. In a sense, we don't need to point and say, and God did that thing, and then God did this thing, because God is there woven through the story, doing big and little one of the reasons why I wanted to read the book to the kids is because Max is the hero of the little things. God does the little things in our lives as well as the big. God is not just the miraculous moments, but is also in the small and the mundane. And one of the things that we should realise is that God is there in our lives doing the same thing. You know, for me, one of the ways that I see my faith 
is in 2020 hindsight, as I look back and see what God has been doing, not just as I sort of sit there and say, well, God's done this at this moment, but as I look back and sort of see God as a thread through my life, working with me, shaping me. And, you know, some of those times that I see as I look back, I didn't realise God was doing stuff at the time. I didn't realise what God was doing and how God was doing it. But God is at work constantly. And in this story, in this miraculous story, in the story of Ruth, God is there at work constantly. This book shows us that we can see where God is at work. God can be there as we reflect back. For you and me, we need to realise that God is there for us. Working with our choices, working with the actions along the way. This book shows us how we can act with God's faithfulness and loving kindness. It shows us in the actions of Ruth and of Boaz how they live out that intentional love in their life. Human love reflecting love divine. It also shows us how God is accepting of all. One of the things that happens in this story is that Ruth is not a foreigner. Well, she is. She's born in Moab, traditional enemies of the Jewish people. But Ruth is not defined as a foreigner through this book. Ruth is defined as a woman that displays hesed, God's faithfulness, God's loving action. She is defined as that through this story. She is drawn into the people. So what do we need to do with this book? I suppose for me, I want to say, let us see how God is at action through all the moments of our life, through the big and the little. Let us see that God draws all people in. It's not just about the club, it's about everyone. And let us see how as we look back through our life, we can see and explore where God is at work. I just want to give us a couple of seconds to reflect. And there's two things that I want you to reflect on. One is, how have you seen God at work in your life? If you do that hindsight thing, how have you seen God acting through your time? And the other question I'd love to ask you is how can we love more like Christ? How can we reflect divine love in our actions? Intentional chosen love like Ruth. Intentional chosen love like Boaz. Reflect those questions just for a couple of seconds. Amen. I think Jenny is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are almighty and everlasting. The great I am, our light and our life. <clears throat> Teach us to be a thankful people in all circumstances. Lord Jesus, you are God in the flesh. Our salvation, King of kings. Your perfect, our perfect example of servanthood through your death on the cross. <clears throat> Lord... You ask us to be helpful. 
sorry, you ask us to be thankful. And sometimes it can be hard to feel this way with the struggles and the circumstances and the people in our lives, not knowing if it will turn out all right. Lord, I ask that whatever the circumstances of everyone here today, <clears throat> I ask that you would help each person in the midst of their difficulties and to shine your Christ light into their lives. Help each of us to minister to, minister to each other in your name and change what we can to accept what we need to accept and always with a thankful heart. And there are many people in our church and our lives we need to pray for or give thanks for. And let's just all take a minute to pray silently for them now. Let's pray. continue <clears throat> and I thank you for the body of Christ in this church Lord bless each person here with all the fruit of the spirit as we learn and grow in you give us a thirst for need, deeper knowledge of your word and the times the opportunity and the commitment to study and learn more and overall may this church be a house of prayer full of wisdom and peace I thank you <clears throat> for the ministries of this church. May we always be focused on you, Lord, and seek to give you glory and honour every step of the way and forever. Deepen our commitment and service to each other and to you. I just pray for the scripture in schools and those who teach it. I know Richard does, but I'm not sure if there's anybody else in this church who does. I expect there is, there is. Lord, we are thankful for this opportunity and we pray for the children who hear your word, that their hearts would be receptive and they would seek out more knowledge of you. And we pray for all those that teach in our local schools that you would bless their work. Give them clear minds, good teaching skills and to be guided in word and deed. For the work and teaching of our local churches, may they all be deeply rooted in your word, united together in the work of building your kingdom with grace and truth, and honouring you every step of the way as they serve you. For the uniting church in Australia, for it to be infused with your love and grace, that your word reigns supreme in its teachings and in its heart, and for humility and kindness to be evident in our lives. For our country, I pray for our nation and leaders. Give our leaders wisdom that they may be able to do things beyond their understanding. Help them to choose the right path when they make decisions on behalf of this nation. And we ask that the truth of your word continue to go forth freely changing lives and turning people away from the influence of the evil one. We believe in your promise that your word goes out and achieves the purpose for which it was sent. And believing this promise, help us to do your will. For this world, <clears throat> there are many troubling situations in this world, Lord, that make it difficult sometimes to focus on where it will all end. We do need you, Lord Jesus. Help our leaders make decisions that benefit their nations and their neighbours. Lead us away from war, from selfish ambition and the desire for power over others. Help us to protect the dignity of human life and replace hatred with your love. But we have your promises that there is hope for a hopeless world. And may the message of 
peace ring out from all churches. Gracious Lord, help each and every one of us to be good stewards of the blessings that you have given us. Open our minds to areas we need to change in our lives. May we be of noble spirit, generous and kind to those in need. Be willing to be patient and wise and to speak only words that bring life and light. <clears throat> As we finish up in prayer, help us to remember, Lord Jesus, that we are yours and part of the greatest family on earth, the priesthood of all believers. Please guide us to not be fearful to meet together and to walk courageously with you. We look forward to the day of your return when you come to make all things new, when all knees shall bow and all tongues confess that you, Lord Jesus, are Lord of all. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. All honour and glory and blessing to you forever and ever. Strengthen us and help us to be faithful till our journey's end and we finally meet you face to face. And the Spirit of Jesus be with you all. I pray this and all of our prayers. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to thank you for the ways that you support this church with your offering. And there's our tap and donate out there and there's the offering box out there. Let's dedicate our offering to God's work in the world. God, take our offering and take our lives that we may serve your kingdom, that we may share the good news of Christ. Amen. So we're wrapping up our series on human love reflecting love divine and I thought what better song to go out on than uh, how deep the father's love for us because the more we understand God's love for us the more we're able to reflect that in our own lives with the people around us and in all those small circumstances with the little kindnesses and things so let's all stand and sing how deep the father's love for us
no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ. His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from Everyone, we're going to be having some pizzas after the service. We'd love you to hang around and join us if you're more than welcome to. I don't know about you, but it feels like I know very small glimpses, but a few glimpses of spring are starting to come in. I've got some ducks down in my paddock and they had some ducklings yesterday, so there is some hope around. Well, they're going to tell you the eight o'clock has looked at me and said, no, Richard, it's just way too cold. <laughs> As we go from this place, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>